my name is David Cranston and uh, I have been in Oxford in the United Kingdom for the last 35 years. I worked as a urological surgeon in Oxford uh, at the hospital, the University Hospital in Oxford and also for Oxford University. So I have always been involved in various research programs including uh, complex kidney cancer and the treatment for complex kidney cancer and over the last 20 years have been involved with high intensity focused ultrasound. This all started in 1999 uh, through a patient of mine and through links with Professor Tim Mason in Coventry University and uh, Dr Jim Butler and various other people and we had links with China so we took the first uh, Chinese Haifu machine from Chongqing, the JC machine, uh, to Oxford in the early 2000s. And we had the JC uh, extracorporeal Haifu machine that we then arranged CE marking for it to get certification for Europe. And we looked at liver cancers and kidney cancers and as a result of that it was CE marked so it was approved by the European Union and following that there have now been a lot of other machines uh, in Europe uh, as a result of the work that uh, myself and colleagues did um, from that first machine but we are now using it for uh, other things as well. Well the machine, the machine that we have is from Chongqing Haifu um, we have been doing some work for prostate cancer um, and there are other machines made in Europe for uh, treating prostate cancer but the big machine that we have, uh, extracorporeal machine, is the JC, initially the JC machine from Chongqing Haifu and now it's the JC200 machine uh, which we have in Oxford. Uh, the thing that we're doing in the United Kingdom is quite a lot of the clinical trials. One of the problems is that we have the only uh, machine in the United Kingdom so far that is the Chongqing ultrasound guided machine. There are one or two other HIFU machines around. But the importance of Oxford is in doing some of the clinical trials. I think the uh, thing about this technology is that the technology is extremely good but it needs to be proven in, in proper clinical trials, ideally randomised controlled clinical trials, but uh, which we are hoping to do with the study on uterine fibroids. Um, we have been treating uterine fibroids. Uh, we are about to start a trial looking at pancreatic cancer, and we have also been doing drug delivery studies in the liver and also about to start with the pancreas but we've been using it for other things as well we've been using it for um, uh, the liver the kidney for tumors at the base of the spine sacral chordomas and uh, we are about to start uh, breast trials and further kidney trials um, and in addition to the clinical work there is quite a lot of experimental work going on in Oxford. So in total we probably have about 50 people working in Oxford in various ways on HIFU projects. In terms of Europe, uh, it is being used fairly extensively for uterine fibroids. Um, there are various people using it for um, pancreatic cancer, also for liver and um, we are going to start again looking at kidney. We have problems with kidney. The problem with kidney is that the ribs sometimes get in the way and you have quite a lot of fat around the kidney, which makes it difficult for the ultrasound machine to get through there. There are other machines. For example, in London, there is a brain HIFU machine, which uh, uh, Professor Gedroyd is using for treating Parkinson's and tremors. So that's very exciting. Um, there are the prostate HIFU machines around which uh, are working. Um, in the United States, the MRI-guided HIFU for uterine fibroids is FDA approved. 
In the UK, we have just, uh, I think, got nice approval for ultrasound guided HIFU uh, for uterine fibroids, which is very exciting. Um, and also, I think the prostate HIFU, transrectal prostate HIFU using a, a different machine is also now just been FDA approved in the United States. So it is in increasing. And uh, recently, I, with many others, were at a meeting in Barcelona. And the development over the last 20, 10 years has been quite extraordinary in terms of the scientific application and in terms of the uh, development clinically of HIFU in, in many different disorders. So it is a technology which is getting much more established clinically and as the technology gets better so the indications will increase and I think it has a very bright future. The obvious advantages are that it is non-invasive, you do not make any holes in the body, um, it is safe, there are relatively few side effects and very few serious side effects um, and a lot of the patients can be treated under sedation rather than a general anaesthetic. Um, most of them can go home the same day or the following day. So the recovery rate is much better. The treatment is good. And unlike radiation, which you cannot normally give twice, uh, HIFU you can repeat and give it again and again. Chongqing HIFU, of course, is a company which uh, I've seen develop over the last 20 years. Uh, it is a company that is growing. It is a company that has a very good national and in international reputation. Uh, Oxford University have recently looked at the company in detail to find that it is a company with great integrity that is doing well. So from the international point of view, it has a good reputation. Uh, the machines that they produce are extraordinary, very good. We're working with them and excited to see future possible developments of different machines. So uh, we are very privileged and enjoy being part of the uh, process. I often uh, liken it to somebody who is pushing a big stone up to the top of the hill and it is very, very difficult to push it up the hill. But when you get it to the top, it will start rolling very quickly down the other side and I think that for uh, 20 years or so one has been very slowly pushing a stone to the top of the hill. I think we're almost at the top of the hill and we're going to see it rolling down the other side very quickly. I think the developments over the next five, ten years are going to be very exciting.